Earlier this month, FTX and Alameda Research founder Sam Bankman-Fried was supposed to testify under oath to US politicians about what had happened to his crypto empire. Sam was arrested the day before he was scheduled to appear, but that didn't stop him from leaking his planned testimony to the press. And it's safe to say that it contained some interesting information. That's why today I'm going to summarize Sam's leaked testimony, explain what it says in simple terms, and tell you how it could affect the FTX Alameda situation as well as the crypto market. To quickly recap, Sam was supposed to testify to US politicians on Monday the 12th of December and Tuesday the 13th of December. Although Sam skipped the first hearing, he apparently was planning on appearing virtually at the second one. However, he was arrested on Monday afternoon and obviously could not attend. Now, if you watched our video about the Tuesday FTX hearing, you might recall that Sam leaked his testimony to the press during the actual hearing. You might also recall that new FTX CEO John J. Ray III and his team haven't been speaking with Sam, even though he has info that could assist in FTX's crypto recovery. Trust me when I say that this is the only reason why I'm taking the time to go through Sam's planned testimony. I reckon he's already had enough time in the spotlight for one lifetime and should spend the rest of his years in the dark behind bars. Note that the link to Sam's testimony is in the description. Now, Sam's planned testimony starts with, quote, I fucked up, which is arguably the worst way you could possibly start a statement to US politicians. Sam then says that his only concern is that FTX customers are made whole, meaning that they get all their cash and crypto back, all eight plus billion dollars of it. Sam goes on to highlight what I'd mentioned in the introduction, and that's that he and the other former executives of FTX have information that could assist the current FTX team in recovering assets. Sam also claims that the new FTX team is holding his personal data hostage. What's interesting is that Sam implies that the current FTX team is being misled by members of FTX US in their asset recovery process. He even goes as far as to declare that the current FTX team will not succeed in making sense of FTX and Alameda's web of subsidiaries and their assets without his help. Now, call me crazy, but this sounds like Sam is trying to imply that he has valuable information that could reduce that 115-year prison sentence he's facing. If you're wondering what exactly Sam has been charged with, you can check out our video about that using the link in the description. Now, after reiterating that John and his associates have refused to communicate with him, Sam insists that FTX US is solvent and that FTX US users could be made whole tomorrow. According to John, this isn't the case and could be evidence that Sam is trying to get the bankruptcy process moved to the Bahamas. In any case, the second part of Sam's planned testimony explains what happened to FTX and Alameda, at least from his point of view. Sam starts by explaining that Alameda Research was founded in 2017, FTX was founded in 2019, and FTX US was founded in 2020. He then repeats a fact we're all familiar with, that Alameda was trading with leverage on the FTX exchange. Sam claims that Alameda's leverage was minimal in 2021, borrowing just 10% against its assets, which were worth $50 billion at the time. In early November this year, the value of the assets Alameda was holding collapsed by more than 50%, bringing their total value down to $11 billion, which was the same as its liabilities, that is, its debts. However, Sam reveals that only 3 billion of Alameda's assets were liquid, i.e. easily tradable. At the same time, a bank run had begun on FTX, with users rushing to withdraw their cash and crypto to the tune of $4 billion per day. This somehow forced FTX to margin call its users, including Alameda, 
which was unable to pay back the debts on its leverage position. Sam blames the tweet by Binance CEO Chengpeng Zhao about Binance's selling FTT for FTX's subsequent insolvency. But if you watch the FTX testimony, you'll know FTX was insolvent well before this point. You'll also know Alameda wasn't subject to the same liquidation rules as other FTX users. This relates to the third part of Sam's planned testimony, which explains what went wrong with FTX and Alameda. Sam starts by arguing that he was not running Alameda, so that side of the equation was not his fault. However, he was running FTX, and he takes full responsibility on that front. Sam explains that the value of Alameda's assets fell around 90% since the start of the year, hence why the trading firm only had $11 billion on hand after the crash in early November. Sam then blames Alameda for not being sufficiently hedged and investing billions of dollars into illiquid assets. As for FTX's failures, Sam claims that the FTX dashboard didn't accurately display Alameda's position size, which could be a subtle way of blaming FTX CTO Gary Wang, who likely designed the dashboard. Sam also acknowledges that FTX had next to no risk management under his leadership. He then goes on to why he also blames Binance for the collapse of FTX and Alameda. Besides CZ's tweet, Sam says that Binance's initial offer to buy FTX meant that Sam couldn't accept buyout offers from other parties. Binance pulled out shortly afterwards, and Sam alleges this was done to take down FTX. Sam also explained that FTX bought back Binance's stake in the exchange because it wasn't cooperating with authorities who were vetting FTX. Now, I find this hard to believe given it appears that FTX wasn't vetted at all, but I do believe that Binance gained from FTX's fall, as Sam claims. But so did other exchanges, including Coinbase. Now, this reminds me of something everyone seems to have forgotten, and that's that FTX had announced that it was planning on making its own stablecoin at the end of October. Take a second to consider just how cutthroat stablecoin competition has been. I'll leave it at that and let you do your own research. Now, conspiracies aside, Sam manages to admit that he too is at fault for the collapse of FTX and Alameda. He reveals that he was spending the overwhelming majority of his time meeting with politicians, working on FTX partnerships, and managing employees, aka having weird parties in his Bahamas penthouse. Jokes aside, Sam says that he wishes that FTX had been more transparent, that FTX had better systems to keep track of customer assets and liabilities, another dig at Gary Wang, and that he had never signed the Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. Now, this ties into the fourth part of Sam's planned testimony, which is, of course, about FTX's Chapter 11 bankruptcy filing. Now, this is where things get very interesting, but I'll remind you to take everything Sam is saying with a truckload of salt. He is allegedly a scammer and a fraud after all. Now, Sam starts by saying that he started receiving many calls from prospective investors after FTX confirmed it was in trouble in early November. He says that shortly afterwards, he started being pressured by lawyers from a law firm affiliated with FTX US. Sam claims that this law firm went as far as calling his friends and family to coerce Sam into filing for Chapter 11 bankruptcy. Sam claims to have 19 pages of screenshots to show the unethical lengths they went to in their mission. Obviously, they succeeded in the end, and John J. Ray III became CEO of FTX. Sam claims that FTX received an offer for a full bailout 10 minutes after he signed the bankruptcy documents. Now, if I understand correctly, there was still technically time to backtrack on the bankruptcy because it had not been filed with any court. Sam claims that the law firm went on to file against his wishes. Sam then highlights how this particular law firm, John and others, made over $700 million from the Enron bankruptcy. From what I've heard, 
John and his team are being paid a pretty penny to clean up FTX, but, well, there is a very big mess to clean up. Sam goes on to claim that there are still multiple investors who are interested in bailing out FTX and making customers whole, but that the new FTX team is not at all interested in considering these offers. Sam also claims that the new FTX team hasn't made any progress in recovering customer funds. This is a pretty bold accusation to make, given that Sam hasn't been in contact with the new FTX team as per his own admission. That said, it's clear that this law firm is up to something, and Sam again stresses that he believes the new FTX team is being misled by this law firm regarding funding for FTX. However, this could all be just another ploy by Sam to get the FTX bankruptcy process moved to the Bahamas, something that's further suggested by the fifth part of his planned testimony. This part concerns FTX's international jurisdictions. Sam starts by once again stating that FTX US should be solvent, and it's only FTX International that's facing insolvency. He points out that FTX US and FTX are not subsidiaries of each other and therefore independent. Not surprisingly, Sam fails to mention that he holds a controlling stake in both. More about that in the description. Moving on. Sam also claims that FTX International doesn't have any US users, but John stated in his testimony that 2% of FTX users were somehow from the United States. Now, if this is true, I take it as a further sign that something seriously shady was going on at FTX, but let's not go there. Now, Sam claims that the bankruptcy process for FTX International began in the Bahamas the day before FTX filed for bankruptcy. This is why Bahamas authorities filed with courts in the United States on the 16th of November, stating that the Bahamas was the primary insolvency location. Sam then claims that FTX US users were protected until John and his team took the helm. He points out that FTX US was regulated by multiple agencies in the United States and that the platform was separate from FTX. However, John's testimony suggests there could have been a commingling of assets. Oddly enough, Sam claims the opposite in his planned testimony. He clearly states that FTX US's assets were segregated from FTX's assets and once again claims that FTX US users could be made whole at a moment's notice. He also claims that FTX US was operating normally until John became CEO. Sam goes on to list what he alleges are misstatements about the current state of FTX and Alameda. He starts by saying that John is actually not the CEO of FTX International, just the CEO of FTX US. He also claims that the transfers from FTX International to Bahamas authorities were authorized. Sam then claims that the new FTX team has, quote, overstepped its mandate by including all the different FTX companies that were not subsidiaries of FTX International or Alameda Research. Sam insists that only the true owner of these entities should have access to the data, which is, funnily enough, Sam himself. Sam goes as far as claiming that the new FTX team is breaking multiple laws in multiple jurisdictions by taking all FTX and Alameda's companies through the bankruptcy process. Sam fails to mention that he broke the law by using billions of dollars of FTX customer funds to capitalize Alameda's reckless trades. But let's just go along with it for now. Next, Sam reveals that the $300 million minting of FTT tokens reportedly requested by Bahamas authorities never happened, and that this can be verified on chain. He also says that the breakdown of FTX's users by jurisdiction is not accurate, with only 1% of users being based in the Cayman Islands, not 20%. Sam then says that information the new FTX team claims it can't find can be easily found, at least by Sam. This includes information about FTX employees, on-chain evidence of FTX and Alameda's trading activities, 
and the list of the top 50 FTX creditors, which includes customers. Sam once again says that he has tried reaching out to John and the new FTX team to assist in the bankruptcy process, but has been completely ignored. He says that this fact means it's ridiculous for John to claim that he and other former execs of FTX have failed to identify wallets belonging to the exchange. Note that these are just misstatements related to the bankruptcy process and the new FTX team. Sam also includes a few misstatements from the media and the crypto community, namely that Sam tried to manipulate the price of Tether's USDT. Sam provided screenshots from a signal chat which included CZ, Tether CTO Paolo Arduino, Tron founder Justin Sun, and even former Kraken CEO Jesse Powell. Unfortunately, Forbes made the screenshots too small to see, but I reckon it doesn't really matter. That's because there is on-chain evidence that Alameda was shorting USDT when FTX was collapsing, probably in an attempt to recoup some losses. US authorities are also investigating Sam's involvement in the collapse of Terra's UST, and there is on-chain evidence of Alameda playing a role there too. Even so, Sam denies these claims and slams the mainstream media for supporting their evidence-based narrative. Sam also denies being involved in the collapse of failed crypto hedge fund Three Arrows Capital, something the founders of the hedge fund have been alleging. Sam then slams CZ for claiming that Binance had pulled out of FTX when it sold its stake, once again claiming that it was FTX which had approached Binance to buy back its stake for regulatory reasons. Sam also denied that Alameda was front-running users on FTX, despite evidence that this was happening. Sam goes on to claim that he does not have billions of dollars stashed away in a crypto wallet somewhere. On that note, it's starting to look like someone else higher up was behind the supposed hack of FTX shortly after its bankruptcy. Now, Sam finishes his planned testimony by saying that any conspiracies involving a particular political party or money laundering through a particular war-torn country are, quote, deeply offensive. This includes claims that Sam was taking lots of stimulants, which he admitted was partially true in a recent interview. So, this brings me to the big question, and that's what the information in Sam's testimony means for the FTX Alameda situation and for the crypto market. Well, regarding FTX, I suppose that ultimately depends on whether the current FTX team starts communicating with Sam. I, for one, couldn't care less about where the bankruptcy filing is taking place. As an FTX creditor, all I care about is getting my crypto back, and I'm sure my fellow creditors will agree. As much as I despise Sam, it seems that he does have information that could help us to that end. However, it does look like Sam is making this conditional upon him being in control of FTX by having the bankruptcy process moved to the Bahamas. In other words, Sam is claiming to have access to valuable information to try and influence the bankruptcy process. He probably knows that FTX creditors will respond in exactly the way that I did. We don't care about the specifics of the bankruptcy process. All we want is our money back. Ironically enough, Sam is leveraging the issues he sees in the bankruptcy process to try and wiggle his way out of life in prison. Still, there's no denying that there does seem to be some shady stuff going on with that law firm. There's no question that there's a huge financial incentive for them and for John to drag out this process for as long as possible and make it exponentially more complicated than it perhaps needs to be. I've actually seen lots of commentary about how John is setting himself up for retirement with the FTX bankruptcy, and it looks like the other recently appointed executives are in the same boat. Even if it's true, it's arguably an issue of the bankruptcy process itself. Humans respond to incentives after all. What's truly tragic is that the longer the bankruptcy process takes, then the better it is for the crypto market. That's simply because 
the longer it takes for the new FTX team to find all of the exchange's assets, the longer it will take for them to sell these assets. Logically, any selling of recovered coins and tokens by the new FTX team is likely to be a drag on the crypto market, especially if we're still in a bear market. Ideally, this selling wouldn't happen until the next bull market, but I would rather not wait until 2024 or 2025 to get my crypto back. This is assuming, of course, that FTX would even bother to refund cryptocurrencies at all. They could just liquidate everything and give creditors cash equivalent to what their crypto was worth in 2022. Never mind that the US government is apparently trying to get lots of tax money from FTX. In sum then, Sam's planned testimony suggests that the FTX bankruptcy process is going to take a very long time and that creditors probably won't be made whole. The silver lining is that the crypto market will likely suffer less, but there could be secondary effects in the form of cryptocurrency regulations. This is a story, folks, which is, unfortunately, just going to run and run. Thank <laughs> you.